Hello and welcome to Photoix. In this video I'm going to give a very quick uh, demonstration on how to edit an image in Lightroom 3. I'm not going to go into too much depth, this is just going to be a bit of a, a beginner's look at Lightroom if you've never used it before, just to show you how easy it is, how quick it is and what you can do with it. Okay, so first of all here we've got an image I took last week, just of some old rusty bench that I found. Um, I used ISO 200 at 31mm on the uh, Nikon 24-70 at f2.8 and 1 640th of a second. I focused on this area here to get uh, nice uh, out of focus areas in the rest of the bench. Now the sky was pretty grey, it wasn't a very nice day, it was quite overcast. As, as you can see you've got a really horrible white blown out sky up here. Okay, so the first thing that I would normally do when I import an image is I'll come back to my exposure slider and I'd make sure that the exposure is where I want it to be. As you can see, as I drag it down, the image gets darker and as I pull it up, the image gets lighter. I think it's pretty much good where it was. Maybe leave it there. Uh, the recovery slider. What this does is it recovers the highlights that have blown out or are starting to blow out. If you keep an eye up here on this section of the histogram, as I pull this slider, you can see those highlights being pulled back. Put it back to naught. If you then keep an eye up in the sky here, Pull the recovery slider. As you can see, it just gets a little bit lighter. You see a bit more blue starting to come out. So I'm going to put that on 100% recovery. Normally, you try and avoid using this if you can. But on a day like this was, there's no way I could have exposed for this area and got the sky where I wanted it to be as well. Fill light. Well, this is like using fill flash. It brightens up the front of the image. I don't want that in this shot. Blacks obviously adds blacks. And again, don't really want much, maybe just a little bit just to give it some depth. The brightness is fine, the contrast is fine at the default of 25. You can get some weird effects with the contrast. So I'm just going to leave that where it was, roughly. Clarity. What clarity does is it um, sharpens up the midtones. You can see if I bring it down to minus 100, the image looks quite out of focus. And as I bring the slider up, you can see it pulls all these midtones sharp. I'm going to leave that about there. The vibrant slider, as you can see, it pulls up the saturation of all the colours in the image, or we can pull them down to get kind of moody, flat images like that. I'm just going to leave that back right there. Uh, saturation, obviously, can desaturate the image, black and white. One can really boost the saturation to get weird effects going on. Put that right there, I think. Now, this section down here, you have several different options. You have the hue, saturation, luminance, or all of them. So, you're going to leave it on saturation. Usually, on landscapes, I tend to boost blues a little bit, get some more blue in the sky up here. At the moment, I'm just going to leave that down here. Because I'm going to do something else to the sky in a second. Right, um, I'm quite happy so far with the main part of the image, but I'm still not happy with this sky. It's still too bright. There's several options I could do here in Lightroom. The first is I could use an adjustment brush in the exposure tool, and I could paint 
over here and then I could adjust the exposure. You can see with this slider I can expose, underexpose it. But that's not really the way to go for this type of sky. Instead what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this tool here which is the graduated filter. And I'm going to create a graduated filter to come across to darken this part of the image. I'm just going to pull this down to about there. I'm just going to pull this slider right down just to see what I'm going to get. And you just need to uh, play with this just to get it how you want it. I just want to get this sky looking a bit nice so I think that'll probably do roughly for now. There we are, we've got a bit more sky in here now. Now I'll come back down to this blue saturation and just bring a bit more blue in. Oh, that's good for now. So what else have we got here? If you come down a bit you see we've got this sharpening pane and we can zoom in to a certain part of the image and then add some sharpening. You can move this around to make sure the bits of the image that you want sharp. Now with this masking tool here, what this does is it um, masks the area to be sharpened. And it's default at naught there, it will sharpen absolutely everything on the image. If you press the Alt key and click on that, you'll see it all goes white. That's the mask, that means that everything that's white will be sharpened. As you bring this slider up, you'll see black starting to come through. And the black areas won't be sharpened, just the white areas. And using this, you can select which bits of the image you want sharpened. Now with this image I don't want the sky to be sharpened really, I just want the grass and the main edges of the bench to be sharpened, so somewhere around here is probably quite good. And that will just sharpen the areas that are in white. Noise reduction, you can add a little bit. I shot this at ISO 200 so it shouldn't really need too much. But you just add a little bit just to take away any of the grains that might be there. This section down here is called uh, Lens Corrections. And what this does is it corrects any perspective issues, any distortion, any uh, chromatic aberration, and any vignetting. It's got a massive database of lenses, and using the EXIF data from your camera, it automatically selects the correct lens. As you can see here, it's selected the nickel 24 to 70. And Adobe have made profiles to um, correct any flaws that the lens might display. You can adjust them yourself as well. But um, Adobe tend to get it pretty spot on with these, so you just leave it at the default. As you can see with the distortion, you don't get a lot of distortion with this lens anyway, especially at 51mm, so it's not really making much difference. Um, you'll really notice this when using wider angle lenses like the 14 to 24 or the 16 to 35, and it will really help uh, correct those distortion issues. Yeah, these bits down here uh, I don't need to use for this image, so I think that's probably pretty much it. I'm pretty much happy with the way that this is. But I'm spending a bit more time. I'll do the sky a little bit better with the graduated filter. I don't want to spend hours doing all this to show you. So that's it. Um, what I will do here quickly is I will just reset this image so you can see how it started. I'll come back to the history. So you can see the difference I've made just very quickly. Also, I've been talking you through it. 
usually that would only have taken me about two or three minutes to do all that. So you can see just with those few minutes the difference you can make to your images. That's the power of Lightroom. Um, Lightroom is non-destructive, so it doesn't ever change your original raw file. All it does is create a, side, a sidecar file with all these settings listed, which it then applies to a copy of the raw. So at any point, you've always got your original raw file to come back to and re-edit however much you like. So say in a couple of months' time, I decide I really don't like this. I can come back, and reset it back to how it was, and I can completely redo the image. I could do it in black and white, for example. I can just play around with these sliders as much as I want, and get as many different effects as I like. It's really uh, limitless to what you can do with it. You can create as many different types of image as you want from one single wall file. And whenever you're fed up with it, you can just reset it back to where it was. Okay, that'll be all for this video. I'm going to do a few more videos, uh, different areas of Lightroom from importing, exporting. Um, I'll show you in more detail what these different icons up here do. And I'll go into a bit more depth on some of these sliders as well. Okay, so that's it for this video. If you have any questions, just please leave a comment. Thanks very much.